Hey, Mark Thomas here. As a part of this blog, I wanted to show you the design toolkit. And this is the toolkit that comes with the Cobit 2019 design guide. You can find this toolkit on isaka.org slash Cobit. Look at the bottom of this Excel spreadsheet and you see several tabs. We are on the instructions tab, which gives an overview of the worksheet and tells you where you can look in the design guide, which is chapter six, to find more information out about this. The next tab you see is called the canvas tab. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. That shows us an overview of all of the inputs we've made in the next several tabs. In order to create a tailored governance system, we have to look at design factors. And you notice at the bottom, each of these green tabs, say DF1 through DF10, those are our design factors. So let's click on DF1, which is design factor one enterprise strategy. So let's move up to the top here and take a look. Our input values. So we can choose our input values in terms of enterprise strategy. Are we in growth phase, innovation, cost leadership? and so on, and we're able to give that an importance factor. As with every one of the design factors, once we put those factors in, then we can look down below and it will give us a set of the most relevant governance and management objectives that can help us satisfy our needs from a governance perspective. Now, we won't look at these charts for every single design factor, but I wanted you to know that it can do it individually for every design factor, but also the canvas that we saw earlier will collectively show us what we need to take a look at. In design factor two, enterprise goals. In COVID 2019, we have 13 enterprise goals. And what we can do here is go through and determine an importance factor. And we're given one through five here. In design factor number three, which is risk profile. You might recall these as risk scenarios or the categories of risk scenarios back in COVID-5. Well, they've been changed a little bit to be a little more applicable and appropriate, but for every risk scenario category, we assign impact and likelihood statements, and those are one through five. And this then gives us a risk rating for every one of those scenarios or those categories from very high to low risk. Design factor number four, INT related issues. You might recall these as pain points in COVID-5. So we take the pain points and we assign them an importance here. We're given values of one through three, which range from no issue to serious issue. Of course, once we finish those first pieces, we're given a summary for step two, the initial design. And it gives us again, the idea of the governance and management objectives that are most applicable. So let's move on to design factor number five. Design factor number five is threat landscape. We are given two options here as high or normal. And of course we give that a percentage. We move to design factor number six, compliance requirements. Are we high, normal, or low? And you can determine what you mean by high, normal, or low. For example, if you are in a highly competitive environment that has a lot of compliance requirements, you would give yourself a higher percentage here. Design factor number seven, role of IT. This is very important because in many organizations, IT can be viewed as a support role. It can be viewed as a factory, a turnaround, or even as a strategic role. And you're giving this an importance factor of one through five. Design factor number eight, sourcing model for IT. Do we outsource? Do we use a lot of cloud services or insource? And again, we're putting a percentage here and those should come up to 100%. Design factor number nine, implementation methods. I like this because now we can identify whether we are an agile-based organization, whether we're doing continuous deployments through DevOps or traditional like a waterfall approach. And again, those are percentage based. And finally, design factor number 10. What is our technology adoption strategy? First mover, follower, or slow adopter? And we provide a percentage for each one of those. Of course, this step three, this is all design factors. We are given a roundup of all those design factors. But what I wanted to do is go back and show you 
what the canvas looks like. What's really nice about the canvas now is if you look down the left hand side, it gives us the complete set of 40 governance and management objectives. Across the top for each of the steps, it also gives us the design factors and shows us what areas or what governance and management objectives are most applicable and appropriate for us to create a tailored governance system. There's one last piece I wanted to mention about the canvas. If you scroll over to the right, one of the things we did not talk about a lot in this blog was the capability levels. One of the things that this tool does for us in step four, conclude the scope of the governance system, is that it gives us suggested target capability levels for each one of the governance and management objectives. I think this is an awesome, awesome thing. More about this on an upcoming blog, but I thought it was good information for you to see. And so this really rounds out a very, very nice tool that ISACA has provided for us for the COVID 2019 model. And now it lets us build that tailored governance system based on our specific needs of our companies. Thank you everyone for your kind attention. I'm Mark Thomas. If you want to keep track of what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter at scout one or you can always visit my website at www.escout.com. Look forward to hearing from you.